Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome back to my channel. And as you can see here, I have a book and this is called Score A Plus Kertas Ramalan book. And today's video is a bit different actually. So you guys have been asking that I do um, like some sort of physics made easy series. And I had a better idea, which is just to do objective questions with you guys. So what I did in today's video and what I will do is I will go through um, some objective questions with you guys. And it is actually more of a teaching session as well, as you will see later on. And I'll just be discussing a ton of objective questions with you guys and going through one by one and I guess just telling you guys all the important stuff as we go. So it's sort of like a revision session, but this is for from four only. So yeah, watch this video and like it if you liked it so that I know if you want me to make more videos like this. So the video of doing physics objective questions will actually be split into four videos. So we have part one, two, three, and four because Surprisingly, explaining these things actually took quite a bit of time, so I'm going to split it into either three or four videos. And because I want to take things slow and explain all the possible information that I have, so this is why the video is a bit long. Anyways, I hope that it will be helpful. Let's look at the first question. The first question is which instruments are the most suitable for accurate measurement for the thickness of a coin and the internal diameter of a test tube. So this question is more of a common sense question. You have to know what the instruments look like and you have to know um, around the thickness that they tend to measure. So first of all, we'll look at the thickness of coin. So when you use common sense, you will know that the thickness of a coin is too little to be measured by a ruler because the smallest measurement of a ruler is mm and it's very difficult to measure the thickness of a coin by using a ruler, you need something that measures a scale that is even smaller than a ruler. So that is why micrometer is the answer for this one. So once you are sure about one answer, you can just tick it up first and cross out the other two answers. And this is just one way to narrow down the answer for MCQ. So this answer will be micrometer. And then Next, we have to measure the internal diameter of a tube, of a test tube. So a test tube looks like this. And to measure the diameter of the test tube, because it is not a 2D object, it is a 3D object. So for that, you would require a vernier caliper. Um, I'll insert a picture of a vernier caliper somewhere. And I'm sure you, see, you have seen it in the lab as well. But vernier caliper is an instrument which is used to measure the diameter of test tube. So do remember that. So as for this question, the answer would be B, Vernier caliper. And then for the second question, we would actually need the calculator for this. Okay, so the second question is that two sides of a rectangle are measured as 4 mm and 5 mm. What is the area of rectangle in meter square? So what you have to take notice here is the changes in the unit. The actual units given are mm and mm, but the answer that they want is in meter square. All right. So how do you solve this question? First of all, to be able to solve this question, you need to first know that micrometer equals to Sorry, millimeter equals to times 10 to the power of negative 3. This is something that you would have to know. Uh, you have like micro is times 10 to the power of negative 6 and more. But these are the units that you have to remember. And how I remember milli is equals to negative 3 is because here's m for millimeter. And... This M right here, that is 3 legs. So that is why it is times 10 to the power of negative 3. This is how I always remember it. And so, to solve this question, you would have to type this into the calculator. 4 times 10 to the power of negative 3 plus mm. And then times 5 
times 10 to the power of negative 3 okay so you just directly type this into your calculator and you should be able to get the answer Okay, the answer that I got is 10, 2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 meter. And so the answer here is C. So the, the way to do this kind of questions is to look at the unit that is provided in the MCQ first. If it's the unit provider is mm as well, then you can just times. But if the unit provided is in meter, then you have to convert everything to meter first as you're doing the calculation. So anything could come out, it could give you micrometer, which is times 10 to the power of negative 6. They can give you um, many, many conversion units, so make sure that you know all of those. Anyways, now we'll move on to number 3. Which pair of scalar quantity and vector quantity is correct? So to answer this question, you would have to know what is scalar and what is vector quantity. So they can even ask this question as a definition as well. But scalar quantity is a quantity which has magnitude only. So scalar quantity has magnitude only. On the other hand, vector quantity has both magnitude and direction. So when you know this, it will be easier to answer this question. So the question here is, okay, which is a scalar and which is a vector quantity? So velocity is a vector quantity because the unit is ms negative 1 and whenever you write velocity, you have to actually indicate the direction as well. And also for velocity, let's say it's 2 ms negative 1, it could be positive 2 or negative 2 depending on the direction that it, it is going. The scalar quantity for velocity would be speed because for speed, there is no direction. It doesn't matter which direction you go because it is a scalar quantity. But vector quantity is velocity. So next, um, so A is wrong. So we can cross that out. And then vector quantity. Displacement is a vector quantity. And the scalar quantity for displacement is actually direction. So this is correct, but then since this is wrong, the whole thing is wrong. Then secondly, we'll look at density. Density, you need to know the formula of density, which is mass over volume. So when you write out the formula of density, you'll see that mass is scalar and volume is also scalar. So overall, density is a scalar quantity. So this is correct. And then we'll look at vector quantity. Acceleration. So is acceleration a vector quantity? Yes, it is. And why is that? So acceleration is actually velocity divided by time again. Okay, wait. So acceleration is actually velocity over time so time is a scalar quantity but velocity is a vector quantity as we have discussed just now so whenever one of it is vector you can conclude that acceleration itself is a vector quantity so this is correct as well your answer will be b for this question